And yeah. it was very difficult for me to sort of pick open those emotional scabs on myself and to live mm -hmm. inside of that pain that he's going through. And as yeah. a result, some of the more difficult scenes in the movie are the scenes in which he's finally confronting that pain. I was trying to actually summon those demons and create them, which terrified my girlfriend. And actually, we summoned a couple demons by mistake. I didn't think that I would be that successful, but we had a couple mm -hmm. frightening moments of massive spiders appearing. First they appeared in the script, then they appeared on the wall behind yeah. us. That was when summoning demons was banned. A lot of mental disorders can be benefited in some ways through therapy and through meditation and through personal growth. This was not about that. You know, this is a person who is suffering. Mm -hmm. This is a woman who is going through struggles that sadly many of us have dealt with firsthand, myself included and, and Keith included. After watching The Vigil, I can say this movie was one of the most terrifying and satisfying watch lately. I am a huge fan of horror movies and I must admit it was a break from watching those Christian horror movies as The Vigil steeped into the ancient Jewish lore and demonology. So Dave, a huge welcome to E-Times and we are so happy to have you joining with us today. Thank you. Happy to be here. So talking about the film, as an actor, you not only had to offer a frightening and a terrific performance, but you also had to accurately convey those Jewish traditions and prayers. And the fact that you did it all alone there. I want to know what made you say an absolute yes to the film and which was the most intense part shooting for? Okay, yeah. What made me absolutely say yes to the film was after speaking with Keith Thomas, the director, and mm -hmm. realizing that he really has a wonderful passion as an artist and a clear vision as a director. Um, mm -hmm. And that is what you look for as an actor. You want someone who knows what they're looking for so that you can come and you don't have to worry about any of that. You can just mm -hmm. be the character, which is the other thing that drew me to the script, which, which was this character, because he comes from a culture that I was prior to not very familiar with and I wanted to learn more about it and I wanted to dive into it. Um, yeah. And, you know, one of the more difficult aspects of the character is his emotional trauma that he's going through that the film really centers around. And yeah. it was very difficult for me to sort of pick open those emotional scabs on myself and to mm -hmm. live inside of that pain that he's going through. And as yeah. a result, some of the more difficult scenes in the movie are the scenes in which he's finally confronting that pain. Um, he's yeah. finally for forgiving himself or apologizing to his brother or to himself. And um, those highly emotional scenes were quite challenging for me, um, not necessarily mm -hmm. on the day we filmed them, but in preparation. Uh, it's sort of, I was oh. just watching the Olympics and an athlete was talking about, the hard part is training and training and training and training. And then when you get to your race, that's the fun part. You come out and you run your race. So um, yeah. those scenes were some of the more challenging scenes to me for the amount of emotional preparation and the emotional toll it took on me in understanding it. And then they were some of mm -hmm. the more cathartic scenes for me when we actually got to film it. And that release of emotion really was yeah. liberating and uh, quite exhilarating. I can say that you have done a terrific job in the movie. I mean, you, you kept me on the tour the entire one hour, 30 minutes, I would say. <laughs> so happy to hear so, that. Mm -hmm. So another important element was the movie didn't throw horror down your throat like a lot of modern movies do lately. In fact, it used horror to fuel the entire narrative. What was your creative process in approaching the script and approaching your character? So I approach every character the same, regardless of the genre. You start from the ground up. You try to understand where did they come from? What do they want in life? Who are they talking yeah. to? And uh, so in that way, it didn't matter. But I also knew that there was a special challenge in this character and in this script because Yaakov spends so much time alone. And, yeah. um, and Keith Thomas would often tell me there's two main locations in this film, the house and your face. Yeah. Yeah. And... So I started kind of toying with this idea of 
having to build things off camera within my mind. So for example, if I look off camera right here and I tell you there's a refrigerator over there, I've now created the refrigerator over there. Or if I tell you there's a window over here, I can see a tree outside. I've now created a tree outside. So when I started reading the script, what I was trying to do was create demons, essentially. I was trying to terrify myself into believing, you know that feeling when you're home alone and you see a dark, dark shadow in the corner and even though you know you're alone, you go, hello? There's something I, was trying to, I was trying to actually summon those demons and create them, um, okay. which, which terrified my girlfriend. And actually we summoned a couple demons by mistake. I didn't think that I would be that successful, but we had a couple frightening moments of massive spiders appearing. First they appeared in the script, then they appeared on the wall behind us. That was when summoning demons was banned. I was no longer allowed to summon demons in the house. I had to summon demons outside. How did you approach the character? Yeah, so part. So I had to find what Yaakov's demons were, what terrified yeah. him. What, what was yeah. hiding in the corner? What was really in that shadow? What was keeping him yeah. up at night? What was behind yeah. him when you feel that someone is watching you? Who was really watching him? And trying to live in that mindset for Yaakov was really a very difficult place to be because living in fear like that and living in that sort of pain and that inability to grapple with yeah. your own issues is mm -hmm. painful. And it's True. also... It's also can do a lot of harm to you. You know, it's like not allowing yourself to heal. And I didn't want to let myself heal because I wanted to heal on camera. I wanted to heal when Yaakov was ready to heal. So in the yeah. time, month, in the month and a half leading up to filming and it, during filming, until we finally got to the scene where Yaakov was able to heal a little bit, um, mm -hmm. I was really trying to live in that fear and in that pain. And it would keep me up at night. And it would lead me to, to having panic attacks and um, having moments of real weakness and sorrow and sadness, which I didn't want to really feel too much because Yaakov mm -hmm. is living in this place where he's unable to deal with them. He's unable to express it quite yet. True. So keeping those emotions bottled when they wanted to get out, me, Dave, the actor, I wanted to deal with these problems and these emotions, but Yaakov wasn't yeah. ready yet. So I had to keep them inside, which really causes you to fester and causes all sorts of other things to go wrong and causes your body to hurt and your back to be sore and it weakens your immune system and you get sick, which I actually did while we were filming. And, mm -hmm. um, and as a result, it, it influenced Yaakov's physical tendencies and uh, the way that his body moves and the way that the pain is expressed when the monster re refuses to let him leave and the pain is literally becomes physical pain inside of him. I was able yeah. to not just put that pain onto Yaakov. Oh, this is what we think it should look like. You know, the mm -hmm. script, Keith Thomas wanted it to be in his hand, but it, I can't just yeah. say, Oh, my hand hurts. How does Yaakov's hand hurt and why? And why yeah. his hand actually hurts because of this internal emotional pain that he's unable to deal with. So it, it, we had to figure out how does that emotional pain turn into actual physical, mm -hmm. physical disruption. So, you know, during the first half of the film, there was barely any communication happening and your eyes nailed every expression when you reacted to the mishappenings in that room. So, you know, as an actor, was that something you consciously paid attention to since there's no acting and you had to act it all out with your eyes? Yeah, actually. So the other actors in the scene became the, t the clock, mm -hmm. the ticking of the clock, the yeah. spider running past, the body. Yeah. Right? So these yeah. are all of the things. And also Yaakov's demons, both internal and literally, like, is he seeing something in the corner? So True. I had to map out exactly where all of those things took place so that mm -hmm. when Yaakov looks at the clock to see you know, is it how much time has passed? It's only, oh my God, it's only been five minutes. Um, yeah. I wanted to actually know what internal journey he was going on that led him to the thought, I'm going to look at the clock. And then like, what internal journey is he going on that leads him to the thought, 
I wonder mm -hmm. how much time has passed. I'm going to look at the clock again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you know, so even though there wasn't another actor in a lot of the scenes, he's mm -hmm. listening to the ticking of the clock. As soon as he's listening to his own thoughts, as soon as there's a lull yeah. in his own thoughts, now he can hear the clock. Now the clock has distracted him again. Then he's distracted. He's thinking about a girl. He's thinking about the book. He's thinking about, did I hear a sound upstairs? The spider comes by. So we really mapped out what all of those micro moments were so that, mm -hmm. I, and, and, and really more than anything, it was just for me, I wanted to feel comfortable knowing at no moment would I ever be sitting there thinking, well, what am I supposed to do now? And if I was, yeah. it would be because Yaakov is thinking, well, what am I supposed yeah. to do now? I guess I'll pull out my phone and listen to some music. I guess I'll text Sarah. I guess I'll be just, oh, what's happening with that light over there? Why is that flickering? Okay, it stopped mm -hmm. flickering. I'll go back to the book. I'll go back to the, okay, now it's time to go look at the light. So it yeah. was all mapped out the same way that dialogue would be in a way. Another interesting as well as a common observation in your film was they use the concept of PTSD as well as dementia to define fear apart from the concept of the mazik. Earlier too, a lot of horror movies have brought in the scary element by seeding in a psychological disease or a disorder. Do you feel that horror movies have a necessity to inculcate something like that? 100%. And actually, that's something I brought up very early on with Keith Thomas. Um, mm -hmm. Because Jacob is taking pills and he has yeah. PTSD, but he also has some sort of unnamed in, in the film uh, mental yeah. disorder and it was yeah. very important to me and to Keith that mm -hmm. we figure out exactly what's going on there like I talked to Keith I was like well what yeah. medication is Yaakov taking exactly you yeah. know let's figure out what dosage he's taking let's figure out how yeah. that would affect him let's figure out mm -hmm. you know how would Yaakov behave after not having taken a pill for a day and a half and then having taken mm -hmm. a half of a dosage how would he behave five minutes after having taken a half a dose versus an hour after, you know, would that pill have really have settled him down a little bit? Would it affect what he's seeing? Would it have, how would it, would it intensify? Would it cause more anxiety? Can pills like that increase the effects of mental disorders, depression, anxiety, stuff like that. Uh, and we also wanted to be really sure that we weren't demonizing, you know, that this isn't just the story of someone who is, oh, he's, he's crazy. And now that he's decided to not feel grief anymore and he's conquered his demons, now he doesn't need pills anymore. And, sure. and that's why we added in this moment at the end where Yaakov actually looks at his pills at, at the end yeah. of the film and he, and he decides, he doesn't, he doesn't throw them in the trash. He doesn't say, I don't yeah. need these anymore. But he looks at mm -hmm. them and he says, I'm not going to take one right now. I think I'm okay for the moment. Yeah. And, and I think that really speaks to how a lot, of a, a lot of mental disorders can be benefited in some ways through therapy and through meditation and through personal growth. But that doesn't mean that it, those th things can cure mental disorders. And in the same way, um, you know, I think you mentioned a lot of films in the past have used the trope of like the crazy old lady. Um, and yeah. this was not about that. You know, this is a person who is suffering. Mm -hmm. This is a woman who is going through struggles that sadly many of us have dealt with firsthand, myself included, and, and Keith included. Um, and, um, you know, we want to give respect to that and not just play that for the easy scare or the easy mood setting. We wanted to make sure that everything was there for a reason and was, again, the same way it's respectful of the Hasidic community and the authenticity to the dialect yeah. and the and the accent and the uh, and the language and the religious protocol, yeah. but also authenticity to people that suffer with PTSD yeah. and people that struggle with yeah. with seeing things that may not be there and people that struggle with dementia. So, Dave, if I, I remind you, uh, sorry, sorry, just just to wrap that up, uh, I do think that in general, filmmakers have a large responsibility to True. take time and respect to those things. And I think it's lazy um, to <laughs> incorporate things into films that aren't fully thought through. True. So Dave, if I rewind a little, you have explored every genre possible in Hollywood cinema. And now that you have made a significant mark of yourself in this industry, 
how do you maintain your individuality as an actor while still reinventing yourself? You know, I just love good stories. I love, I love people. I love learning about people. I love trying to understand what would motivate someone to do something. You know, I wouldn't have done that. Let me understand why that person did that. Let me understand yeah. until, until I realized, oh, that's the only choice they could have made. Of course, this character did this. It's the only thing they could have done. Yeah. If I was them, I would have done the same thing. And so I love stories with good writing, good characters, interesting mm -hmm. cultures and populations. And mm -hmm. uh, I love playing all sorts of different genres. I like, I like drama. I like really talking to people and really exploring human conversations. But I also love comedy. And I would love to play with that some more. And um, as far as you know, continuing to reinvent myself. I don't really feel that I need to. I just need to treat every character with respect and treat every character as they are, which is a complete person deserving of time and care and attention. And um, so I don't worry about recreating myself. You know, I, I recreate myself in my personal life all the time um, yeah. for fun because I like to. Yeah because I like to explore myself and the world and, and, and change things up and learn more about myself in that way. Um, but mm -hmm. when it comes to playing characters um, and different genres, I'm really just looking for characters with strong motivations, strong stories, strong belief mm -hmm. systems, who care about what they're doing and, and, and have an important message to share with the world, um, because that's what I like doing. So thank you so much for doing this with me, Dave. I had a great yeah. time with you and i look forward to seeing you more on screen so thank all so the much. best for thank you so much for taking our time for this you too